an honor for us to be here, and your pastor has been so gracious to us. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to repay him, but he's fed us. I think he's fattened us up for the kill, <clears throat> but uh, we've had a wonderful time of fellowship together, and uh, just a wonderful place to stay, and everybody's kindness to us. And uh, I, I uh, we went out last night after service, and he took us out to a place to eat. I don't even know what the name of it was. Fats. He's trying to get me fat. <laughs> and uh, I aggravated his daughter, Brooklyn. I don't know whether she's going to live or not. <clears throat> but we had a wonderful time. I appreciate the goodness of God, and uh, we're going to sing a song, and then I'm going to let my wife uh, say a few words to you tonight. Uh, Jack Cole was her pastor as a teenage girl growing up, and she's got a lot of experiences to uh, tell you about. But we want to sing a song that uh, we've been married, I guess you all know now, 60 years uh, Monday, and uh, we're going to uh, sing a song that is an old song. We learned it uh, right after we got married, and I have no idea who even wrote the song, but we kind of made it a motto of our life, and uh, and I trust that it'll be a help and a blessing to you. Amen. Key of G. I got one. Say something. Well, we're happy to be here tonight, and oh my, we appreciate everything that ever, all of you've done for us, the nice place to stay, and the food, and we didn't need that, but we've got it, so, <laughs> but we appreciate it so much, and Brother and Sister Ralston have just been a wonderful host and hostess, and uh, it is so good to see all of you. Some, I, I'm, I don't remember, or maybe you're new since I was here, but there's a large percentage here that I do remember, and you've got the same problem I've got. You're looking older. <laughs> but it's wonderful to be here with all of you wonderful people. Oh Lord, as I wonder, oh Lord, as I wonder, on earth here below, on earth here below, my heart is so heavy, my heart is so heavy, wherever I go, wherever I go, I meet with disaster. We'll burn 
ambition. I'm filled with ambition. That worries my mind. I dream of successes. I dream of successes that I'll never find. That I'll never find. I'm haunted by failure. I'm haunted by failure. That troubles my soul. That troubles my soul. But then I remember. Now, the reason that Brother Ralston has us here is the same reason that God spoke to the, to the Israelites and told them, tell this, your experiences to your children and their children on down the line and let them know what God has done and the power of God. And as the scripture tells us, Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever. So we're so thankful to share a little bit tonight. Uh, The Lord saved me 65 years ago. And I thank the Lord. He not only can save us, he can keep us all through these years. And so as a young teenager, I was privileged to be in the midst of a lot of great revivals and a lot of mighty works of God. So uh, uh, miracles was something that was, I hate to say it was just ordinary because we should never think of it that way. But miracles was ever service. You would see outstanding miracles. And uh, so I, I had the privilege as a young teenager to go to Brother Jack Cole's church. And uh, we had a lot of wonderful preachers come in, and God used their ministry. But the first time that I saw or experienced the gifts of the Spirit moving was uh, at Assembly of God Church right out of Dallas, and they were having a revival, and so I got a ride to go. And that night, the Lord was using the minister and my, the power of God was falling and people were being healed. And uh, the gift of the Spirit was working through him. And uh, he would tell the different ones, well, you're ate up with cancer or whatever it was. And they'd said, yes, that's why they came to be prayed for. And, oh, as a young girl, I became so hungry. I said, I want to be prayed for. And I didn't even know what I wanted to be prayed for. But I wanted to be prayed for. And I kept hesitating and hesitating. And finally, they dismissed church. And the minister started to walk out the door. And I said, I've got to be prayed for. So I just ran up to him. And I said, will you pray for me? And he just laid his hand over on me. And all my life, I had had kidney problems. And he said, Lord... 
heal this right kidney in the name of Jesus. That was my first experience, and God healed me right there. And so uh, then it seemed like there was just so many things happening. At Brother Cole's church, on one side of the church, he had what they called the faith home. And in the faith home was people that the doctors have said, there's nothing that can we can do. He got, they gave them up. So when they brought them to the faith home, there was no medicine, there was no doctors or no nurses, but we read them the Bible and prayed. And so uh, I had I was working there at night, and uh, so this particular night there was uh, this lady that we called Granny. She was brought in from Louisiana. And the doctors had given her up. In fact, the doctors had told her family, they said, she'll never make it to Dallas. And they said, but she wants to go. And so they said, all right then, but uh, if she doesn't make it, don't blame us. And they brought her in an ambulance clear from Louisiana. And uh, she just was having a struggle to even breathe. So that a particular night, I was across the hall from her, and I was doing schoolwork. I was just, I was 15 years old. And uh, so I heard her, and she was making a noise. And so I, I, I left the desk, and I went across the hall, and uh, she said, I can't breathe. I'm having a struggle to breathe. Help raise me up. Raise me up. And so I did, I I was raising her up. And she says, pray for me, pray for me. And so I just laid my hand on her. And I said, Jesus, come in this room tonight and heal Granny. And then I just turned around and I walked, was walking across back to the hall. And when I did, I heard the commotion and she was saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Her voice was strong. Thank you, Jesus. And I hurried into the room, and she said, When you walked out, Jesus just walked in and laid his hand on me and said, You're healed. (laughs) Praise the Lord. And she was. God healed her that night. Oh, we began to rejoice in such a way that uh, we were waking up the other people that were asleep. And uh, there was one woman come in, and she says, what's going on? And I said, just touch Granny and believe, and you'll be healed. And God healed her of cancer right there. She passed those cancers that night. Oh, God is a great God, isn't he? One man was in there, and he never had had the Holy Ghost. And so here he comes hurrying in there. And he was asking, what's going on? What's going on? And we said, the power of God's here. And he just went over and touched Granny. And he began to speak in tongues. And before you knew it, I think we woke up everyone there. But God was moving. And people was receiving what they needed from God. Oh, God is wonderful. Well, a few days later, or nights later... I was there, and I was doing my homework. And you know how you don't have to look up, but sometimes you can feel the presence of of something or someone? Well, I could feel someone was at the door, the entrance. And when I looked up, it was a young man that was uh, in his probably 20, 21 years old, And he was demon-possessed. We had to keep the door locked so because we didn't know what he would do. He hadn't spoken a word in a whole year. And uh, when they would take his food, they'd make sure that they locked the door. Well, on this occasion, someone forgot to lock the door. And there he was, standing right there in the doorway. My pastor had taught us that the devil cannot cross the blood. 
And when you need help, you draw that imaginary line and say, devil, you can't cross the blood. And so he started to come toward me, and I, and I told him that. I said, in the name of Jesus, don't walk across there. That's the bloodline. And he looked at me, and he said, shut up. And I began to rejoice. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't rejoice as being told to shut up. But he hadn't spoken in a whole year. So that made me know, I've got the devil on the run. And I told him, I said, you get back to your room in the name of Jesus. And he did. And then I locked the door. <laughs> in 1951, and I wasn't at this tent revival of Brother Jack Coles. It was in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I wasn't there, but I do know Sister Jackie Rose. And Sister Jackie had the terrible disease of scleroderma. At that time, there had been two cases, and both cases, the people had died. That's when your skin, you become petrified. And you finally, your everything just closes up. You can't drink, you can't eat. And she was just laying there. She hadn't had her shoes on, and people would just walk in. She was a little Methodist lady, and people would walk in from the town and just walk by her and just to see her as she had turned to stone. And uh, her son was in the Navy. Her sister and her lived together, and her son had been called in from the Navy because their mother, Jackie, was going to die. There was no hope. And Brother Cole was in Little Rock, Arkansas, in a revival. And uh, they said, they told their Methodist pastor, they said, we want to get her there, and we believe the Lord will heal her. And so he helped them to fix up their station wagon and laid her in it and took her to Little Rock, Arkansas, and then they laid her on a cot over at the side where they were people in her condition. And so when Brother Cole came over to her, he prayed for her and took her by the hand, and she raised up on her feet, and, he, and she walked. He told them, he said, I want you to take her home now, and I want you to feed her. said, she won't eat much at first, but every, every day she'll eat a little bit more and get stronger. And uh, Jackie was healed right there. So it was several years later that I had the privilege of meeting her when she came to Dallas, her and Ida, her sister, and began to work there at the church in the office. And uh, completely healed, but just one little pinky was still petrified <laughs> That was just God showing the world what he did. He had really healed her. So that was a a wonderful experience, seeing that and hearing her testimony. And then there was a little lady by the name of Sister Floth. And she was a little Church of Christ lady. And she had a son that was, I guess you would just say, he was like a vegetable. He was in the wheelchair. And uh, his, was, his body was just all drawn, and he would constantly slobber on himself, and just, he was pitiful. So she brought him to be prayed for. And uh, Brother Cole looked at her, and he said, I'll pray for your son after you get saved. And she says, I want you to know I am saved. And he said, When you get saved, I'll pray for your son. So she went on. Two or three times this happened. Finally, she was willing to bow her knee before God, and she did give her heart to God. And Brother Cole prayed for this young, this son of hers. And he told her, he said, as you grow in God, this young man will be healed. 
So that wasn't an instant miracle, but that was a healing. And we would see in church, it seemed like every week when she would bring him to church, there would be something that he was doing. Finally, he was out of the wheelchair. He was walking. He was able to dress himself. He was able to feed himself. And the last time I saw him, he was just doing wonderful. That is the mighty power of God. Now, not all miracles are alike. And God's moving isn't always the same. And sometimes God has to bring us down even. That he can do a work in us. And there was one instant where this uh, young expecting mother was in the prayer line. And the uh, minister looked at her and he said, young woman, you're carrying a child, but it doesn't belong to your husband. Her husband was there. And he heard this. And she says, oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. He said, no, ma'am. So her husband hurries up there where she was. And she broke down and confessed. You see, I think we have forgot and we have lost the fear of God. And you don't lie to God or the Holy Ghost. But God brought that in out in the open. For her and her husband to get everything adjusted and right. Uh, one Sunday morning at, uh, at Sunday school, we had we we had an assistant pastor there, and uh, there was a man that had been coming, and he was deaf, both ears. He was deaf, couldn't hear a thing, and. Uh, So he went up front to be prayed for. And when he did, the minister called one of the ushers and he said, I would like for you to go out to that uh, front flower bed in front of the church and get you a handful of that dirt. And so he did. He hurried and he come back in with that handful of dirt. And the preacher put some in each ear and then prayed. And God made new eardrums. And this man could hear. Oh, isn't the Lord wonderful? And people's eyes, we saw the blind eyes open. And uh, you, if you've read any about Brother Cole or heard much about him, you know he had what you call reckless faith. And uh, one lady had this huge tumor. And the Lord spoke to him when she went up in front of him and said, I want you to hit her in the stomach as hard as you can. And he said, oh, God, I'll, hit, I'll kill her. I can't do that. I'll kill her. And the Lord said, if you want to see her healed. He said, okay, Lord. And he hauled off and hit that woman in the stomach. And when he did, she fell on the floor. And he thought, God, I've killed her. But she come up shouting. And that tumor was gone. It was gone. God healed her. And many people that had back trouble. You know, anything that you couldn't do, he would have you to do it. After he prayed for you. And so people with back trouble that couldn't hardly move. He'd pray for you and he'd say, touch your toes. And they'd say, I can't. He said, you're healed in the name of the Lord. And they did. They would touch their toes. God healed. And I guess obedience is better than sacrifice, isn't it? So God moved in mysterious ways, many, many ways. Uh, Our son, Randy, our youngest son, he was born with leukemia. But God healed him. We just gathered all of us in church and prayed. And God healed him of leukemia. And uh, my 
There were so many other things I could just go on and on. But I know Brother Savage has things to tell you too. And But I told you about Jackie Rose was healed of scleroderma. And then there was a young teenager when we were in uh, our tent, in our tent revival that came to be prayed for. And God healed her of scleroderma. So God is still alive and still moving. And uh, thank you for this opportunity because I always get a blessing when I think about how God gave me the privilege to witness things that I know without a shadow of doubt what God can do. And he'll do for every one of us. God bless you. Ain't she cute? <clears throat> Y'all laughed. For the next two hours, <clears throat> more or less, uh, I'd like to share some wonderful things that uh, I know, I know personally what God has done. But I'd just like to read a couple of verses of scripture for you first. And uh, in Psalms 71, and uh, we'll just read verses 16, 17, and 18. And uh, this verse 18 I feel speaks to me personally. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also, when I am old, Now, I'm older, not old. Remember that. When I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Amen. God has been gracious to me personally. Uh, Next month, I'll be 78. I'm not on any meds of any kind. Now, that's, that's marvelous. Uh, and I'm grateful for God's mercy to me. Um, <clears throat> most of my, not all, but most of my preaching buddies are already gone on the other side. And I'm still hanging around. Uh, And the reason I'm hanging around there is so that I can uh, aggravate people like Brooklyn. I appreciate the goodness of God. My wife quoted a scripture that uh, her and I both have used many, many times. Hebrews 13 and 8, and you can quote it, Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Most of us, you know, we uh, read, read the Bible and we hear stories about what God used to do and has done. And we don't have any trouble believing stories of the past, even in the Bible, the great stories that have uh, been written down for our benefit we don't have any trouble believing God's going to do great things out jumping us somewhere in the future. Our problem is today. And uh, I just want to tell you, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. People change. And uh, I, as uh, Brother Ryan Ralston asked us to come down here for this particular purpose. Uh, I had uh, mentioned a lot of these things at the fire conference last year. 
and he asked if I would repeat some of those, and Sister Savage already has repeated some of those. But uh, in the book that is titled Modern Miracles, it's on page 63, uh, it goes like this, and I quote, It is apostolic men that make an apostolic age. We are forever thinking to turn back the shadow certain degrees on upon the dial to bring back again the age of miracles, forgetting that he who is without bearableness or shadow of turning has said, If thou canst believe. You get that? If thou canst believe. Not if you were born in a certain country or in a certain time frame. But if thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believeth. You believe that, say amen. amen. That writer went on to say, when by the stress of violent persecution or by some sore test, trial, reproach, and rejection by the world, the old faith is revived. Then we catch glimpses once more of the apostolic age. Now, I want to tell you, I still believe that God is still a miracle worker. Anybody here believe that? He is a miracle worker. I, uh, I come through the years, and on the table out there in the best view, uh, there's pictures. That large picture is a picture of uh, Jack Coe's revival meeting, tent revival in Washington, D.C. That was in 1954. And there's over 20,000 people in that one service that night. Uh, that was common crowds in those years, uh, 20, 30,000, 40,000 people in, in each service. I mean, that's, that was normal. His largest crowd was in uh, New York City where he had uh, 70,000 people each night in a service. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a lot of people. <clears throat> that's a couple more folks than what's here tonight. Uh, but I want to tell you, God's the same. God has not changed. Uh, along with Brother Coe's picture back there on that table is some of our tent meetings, and I come through the years of the uh, 40s and 50s and 60s, and uh, I, we, we remember meeting and knowing men like Gail Jackson. Some of y'all older folks may have remembered some of those men. There was David Nunn. Uh, there was Raymond T. Ritchie, uh, there was Tommy Hicks, and uh, I'm I, I just telling you some of these, Oral Roberts, back when he was good, I lost some of y'all right there, T.L. Osborne in those years, the Dowds done a tremendous work in their life, they, they had probably the greatest revival, Madagascar ever had in the history of that little nation. And uh, there was A.A. A. Allen, whatever you think about him, it doesn't matter. Um, there was uh, W.B. Grant Sr., uh, a great, great man of faith. And uh, he wrote the book, I'm Sick and Tired of Being Sick and Tired. <clears throat> Brother W.B. Grant wrote, I don't know, probably hundreds of little booklets. There was Gordon Lindsay. That was uh, that had started the Voice of Healing Ministry and Ministers. There was Jack Cole, and uh, I, I came along during those great revivals of those years. Tremendous tent revivals, citywide campaigns, um, and when you look and and realize now that tent of Brother Cole's was 220 feet wide, 590 feet long. And in that service, in that picture, over 20,000 in that picture, and he's had many more thousands in other places. I want to tell you, that takes a big tent. 
But God always furnished the need to take care of the expenses. Let me tell you something about Brother Coe. Every year he would go to uh, uh, New York City and he would preach for Thea Jones uh, that had a, a, a theater building there and had great meetings, great services. They'd always give him a Cadillac, a brand new Cadillac every year. He'd drive it home. And uh, he was a giving man. Uh, he would give anybody anything he thought they needed. When folks would come to their house, his his wife, she had some things uh, that she wanted to keep. She'd hide them. Because if somebody said, I like that, he'd get up and give it to them. That's just the type of man he was. And he'd find... Uh, old folks that their washer and dryer was quit and uh, wore out, he'd take his out of his house and give it to them. And uh, that's just the way he was. He was a given man. And when he would uh, bring that Cadillac home one time, there was a younger preacher that came through preaching revival there at the Dallas Revival Center in Dallas. And he, he drove an old clunker. I mean, it was dilapidated. It was so bad a shape that uh, he had to keep the doors wired together <clears throat> uh, just to stay alive inside. And uh, Brother Cole, when he saw the kind of car that that young preacher drove, he gave him his brand-new Cadillac and drove that old clunker to church. <clears throat> it didn't bother him. It was all God's anyhow. And and I wish more people had that attitude. Everything you got belongs to God. It's only on loan to you. Amen. But uh, when, I, when I remember those revival meetings, uh, in those years they had church every night. There was no such a thing as a rest night. You all find it difficult to come out here on Wednesday night. What would you do if they had church every night? Huh? What would you, how, how many of y'all would come every night? But during those years, everybody went to church every night of the year. But things was happening. It wasn't just a meeting. It wasn't just a book report that was read. There was the power of God that was falling in people's lives. And... Uh, uh, she told you about Jackie Rhodes and the young lady, uh, teenage girl in, in Little Rock that uh, uh, was healed of the same disease in our tent meeting there uh, in in uh, North Little Rock, Arkansas. In, in that tent revival, there was a lady that came up to be prayed for. She was blind, totally blind, and could not see at all. And uh, we prayed for her, and uh, I said, can you see? She said, she blinked her eyes, and she said, I see a yellow necktie. I was wearing a yellow necktie. God still opens blinded eyes if we we'll muster the faith to believe God. There is nothing impossible if we will trust God. Uh, I got a phone call yesterday afternoon uh, when we were back at the room and a man from the church where I pastor now in Virginia was there on the line. He said, I wanted to tell you this to remind you uh, before you left. And he said, uh, it slipped my mind. He said, I was in the Veterans Hospital in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and uh, I had a horrible kidney disease. And uh, they had already scheduled me for surgery, and they were going to take one of the kidneys out and uh, do some schedule to uh, for for the other one. And uh, <clears throat> and he said, "You came to that hospital at uh, Veterans Hospital, and you just came into the room, said a short prayer. He said it couldn't have been over one minute, and you left." And he said, before you got to the parking lot, my kidneys were healed. He said, I went to the restroom, 
and I was able to, uh, to, to do what comes natural because God had healed me. He said, the doctor could not understand. He said, I've got you scheduled for surgery tomorrow. But he said, what, what happened? What did you do? And uh, Wallace told him, said, well, my pastor came by and prayed for me. And, and before he got to the parking lot, God healed me. The doctor said, well, whatever it is, keep on doing it. I want to tell you, God's still real. Amen. All types of healings and miracles in those years. They were glorious years. I have seen deaf mutes, people that could not talk or hear totally. I've seen them healed instantly and repeat words that were spoken to them. Can God do it now? Can God do it now? Brother Jack Cole preached a message, and you just reminded me, do it again, Lord. And I want to tell you, I want God to do it again. I'm looking for it to happen. Praise God. But in that era, and, uh, and, and I want to say this because in, in every, there's always been charlatans. You understand? There's always been people that go bad, go haywire. Preachers now even go haywire. They ain't got no sense. But, uh, but in that era, era uh, men got to wanting to get the praise for themselves, thinking it was them that was doing the work. And, uh, and, and there were a lot of men, a lot of men stayed true right up to the end of their life. And I'm grateful that they did. Uh, but others missed out because they wanted the, the praise and the, the uh, honor for what was accomplished. Now, as a result of that, now I come along during those years, and I remember so well in the 60s, uh, there was, uh, it began to drift backwards in those years. Uh, when men wanted the praise for themselves. And as a result, God withdrew his miracle-working power. As a result, God's a jealous God. He said his glory he will not give to another. Anybody believe that? Say amen. And I witnessed and saw in those years as God began to withdraw his miracle working power for a period of time. And in those years, now, I don't know what y'all going to do with this. It doesn't matter. It's okay. But it's what I call the, uh, uh, the rebellious 60s. Does anybody here remember those years? Oh, it was riots. And uh, people rebelled against authority of any kind. And they rebelled against holiness preaching. Now, let me just back up here and tell you a little story that probably would not work today. In one of Jack Coe's revival meetings, 20, 30, 40,000 people in the service, and uh, in those years, most people dressed decently. Um, Probably wasn't saved, but at least they were good moral people. Amen. But in one of his meetings, two... uh, Two young women came under the flaps of his tent, and uh, they were very scantily dressed. And Jack Coe stopped everything. And this wouldn't work today. He stopped everything. He stopped a whole meeting, and he looked out on that crowd of 20, 30, 40,000 people, and he said, Are there any butchers in this place? you got that many people. There's bound to be some butchers there. He said, would somebody catch those two heifers and dress them? <clears throat> Help, Lord. Your servant's in trouble. <laughs> you know, he was a very bold man. And perhaps uh, those uh, 
statements wouldn't work these days. Uh, but I want to tell you, when God's in it, it works. I call it the rebellious 60s because they rebelled against holiness preaching. Those were the years the things started to going backwards as far as wholeness in the uh, organizational, Pentecostal organizational churches. I was there. I remember when they first started wearing jewelry. I remember, come on here. I remember when uh, they first started drifting in that direction. And uh, that's the reason I call it the rebellious 60s because they rebelled against good holiness preaching. And then came the permissive 70s. <laughs> Just have at it. Live any way you want to. Do whatever you want to. Then the godless 80s. The apostate 90s. And then came the new century. Uh, and uh, with that new century come, I saw and felt a special new awakening and for the first time in many years, now I'm older, but I'm not old, but first time in many years, I, I began to see an awakening and a hunger for holiness, preaching, and miracles again. I was uh, in my little office in the basement of my house, I have my office at the church now, but I had a little cubbyhole office in my basement at my house, and it's only about 10 feet wide and maybe 12 feet long, books and a desk. And uh, best I remember, it was in the 1990s. I can't tell you the exact year, but I was praying in my little cubbyhole downstairs one night and I got hungry oh God will you ever visit your church again like you did in those years we need that we have got to have that hello I mean churches whole churches backslid away from God and uh, praying in my office God spoke to me and said now, y'all get a hold of this. Sanctify yourself and tell my people to sanctify themselves for I will visit my church one more time. Praise God. It's coming. It has already started. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, I felt in the spirit in that night of prayer they would not be in great meetings like we had in the 40s and the 1950s and early 60s, but in local churches where people turned their hearts toward God and returned to holiness living, holiness preaching. Come on here and embrace the power of God again. God said he was going to do a miraculous work among his people one more time. I've told many young preachers through the years, don't be afraid to trust God. When everything's upside down, crossways, backwards, in reverse, hold on to what you know is right and trust God for what seems to be impossible. <clears throat> and... Uh, I, I don't, I hesitate to say some of these things because you may feel like that I'm bragging, but I'm not bragging on savage. Savage is dust, but I'd like to brag on Jesus. Anybody here want to brag on Jesus? In 2010, uh, I was in a, a camp meeting in uh, Russellville, Arkansas, and powerful meeting that turned out to be. And uh, I mean, one night the power of God was falling. And a young lady came up to be prayed for in a song service. 
She came up to be prayed for. She had broke her foot that day. She come in a cast. And she come up to be prayed for. Several preachers there, and we all gathered around her and prayed for her. And the power of God fell on that young lady. I don't know how old she was, maybe in her early 20s. And uh, she she felt jerking. Y'all don't know anything about that. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord fell on her. And when it did, she sat down on the edge of the platform. And she took that cast off of her feet leg and foot and when she did the power of God hit her again and she shouted and danced all over that tabernacle she came back the next morning service in high heels praise God now you don't wear high heels with a broken foot unless God's healed it God still does it you believe that say amen Brother Harvey Moore, I guess a lot of you folks know Brother Harvey Moore, a missionary uh, from Arkansas. He called me uh, not too long after that uh, Russellville, Arkansas uh, camp meeting with a testimony of his 11-year-old daughter, Anna. Some of you young people may know Anna. I think she was at the fire conference last year. And uh, she had a thyroid problem with a swollen neck. She had had it for four years. She would taken medicine, of which the doctor said she would have to take it the rest of her life. And uh, on Thursday night at that Russellville camp meeting, she was prayed for while others were being prayed for. No big deal. It didn't seem like she just got prayed for. And God healed her that night. The next uh, day or so, she told her mother that she didn't want to take her medicine anymore because the Lord healed her Thursday night. Well, <clears throat> her neck was no longer swollen, thank God. But Mama said, well, you'll have to wait till Daddy comes home. And see what Daddy says about that. Daddy came home. They told him what she said. He said, well, if God's healed you, then we're going to take you to the doctor and let the doctor examine you and let him say you're healed. They did. They took her to the doctor and examination and blood test and all that that was done. And... Uh, the doctor came back with a report to them. I don't know what has happened. I cannot explain it. But she is totally and completely well. She does not have to take thyroid medicine anymore. I want to tell you, God's still on the throne. I said, God's still on the throne. Amen. I was in a tent revival in... Dallas, Texas, uh, 1961, I believe it was, and uh, a lady by the name of Susie Yarborough. Uh, she lived there in Dallas, and she had a asthmatic uh, condition. She couldn't breathe. She couldn't even walk uh, just two, uh, three doors down to the store without stopping and resting. She came to the meeting that night, and she got prayed for in that tent revival. I'm sorry, it wasn't a tent revival. It was while we was in revival at Brother Jack Coe's church and had some powerful healings there. And uh, she was gloriously healed that night. I just want to tell you all, I've got several testimonies written testimonies by people that were healed. And I wish that we could get a hold of the fact he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What God done in the 1950s, he will do yet today. And I'm experiencing it as we travel from place to place I'm seeing God's miraculous 
healing power manifested among the wholeness folks. Now, I want to tell you, I want to shock you. I'm going to shock you. Wholeness people is the only one going to heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Jack Cole preached for, uh, prayed for Baptist people. He prayed for Methodist people. He prayed for Episcopalians. And uh, when they got healed, and uh, they, he asked them what their faith was, and they tell him, he'd say, well, go be a wholeness Baptist. Go be a wholeness Methodist. Go be a wholeness Presbyterian. I want to tell you, the power of God is still real. We, uh, uh, we had resigned our church uh, a few years ago now, and we evangelized for a couple of months. And before we went and took the Bible Holiness Church at Elkton for 14 months. But uh, we uh, preached across the country during that period of time. We went to Brother Lyndall Birdsong's church for one Sunday uh, services. Had a great, great meeting. And that night, that Sunday night, I did not know it. It was similar to what it is tonight. Such Savage had talked about some miracles that she had witnessed. And I preached on faith, trust in God. I didn't know it. Brother Linda Birdsong did not, was unaware of it at the time, but L.D. Moore's daughter, y'all, I guess y'all know who she was. And uh, she had brought a lady by the name of Sister Wright. Wright or White? White, Sister White, to that service that night. She is an elderly lady from the Assembly of God Church. And uh, so she brought her, and she had had cancer. And uh, they, they had told her a few months earlier that she was cancer-free. But the problem is it came back. She came to service that night, and she had been hemorrhaging and hemorrhaging right seriously. And she uh, she came to church. She intended to be prayed for. Nobody knew why she was there. And when I got through preaching about faith, I had brother, uh, I called for a prayer line and uh, and and had brother Lyndall Birdsong to, to anoint the people and pray for them as the pastor there. And Sister White got healed. Instantly, the hemorrhaging stopped. Praise God. I want to tell you, don't be afraid to trust God. It's still real right now, just like it was in the 1950s. If we can get a hold of the promises of God and lay hold on the word of God. Amen. His word is forever settled. He never changes. I said he never changes. I believe he's here in this service tonight to heal somebody. I'm feeling the presence of the Holy Ghost all over this place right now. In those years, we sang courses. I thought when y'all opened the service tonight with those courses, just reminded me of the old times. They sang courses like that. Amen. They'd sing them. They'd sing the same course 30 minutes at a time, over and over and over. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Amen. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Amen. I want to tell you, amen, it's still. said is still real tonight. Anybody here that feel like you want to get healed tonight, you got a physical problem, you get out of your seat right now. Right now. Come up here and stand. Praise God. Watch God do something here in this place tonight. I believe it. I said, I believe it. Amen. Brother Mark, can you come? 
Amen. I, I feel like something's going to break out in this place. Glory to God. When the Lord spoke to me that he was going to visit his people one more time in the local church, in the local church, I felt led at that time by the Spirit that in every service where we pray for the sick, that the pastor is to anoint you and pray for you. I want to tell you, this pastor believes in the healing power of God. Anybody here believe in it? Yes, Praise God. Have you got any oil, brother? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and start Tell him worshiping what you want. God. Jesus Pray. on the main line. Hallelujah. Tell him what you want. Hallelujah. I know. Why don't you call him up? Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. He is on the main line now. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. He is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Praise God. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Get your hands in the air. Get your head up. Amen. Begin to glorify the name of the Lord. He is a healer. He's a miracle worker. He'll come to you right here in this service. You don't have to wait till next week. Amen. Hallelujah. The glory. Go. The great position is here. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Oh, mighty God. Man, what you say? Praise God. Well, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Yes, yes. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Glory to God. Call him up. He's here. His power you is here. His presence is here. Holy up. Ghost anointing. Well, his Break life's every never yoke. busy. Praise Tell him God. what you want. <laughs> Believe God. Trust God. Nothing impossible. All things are possible to Well, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. He is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. He is on the main line. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. You said you would. Tell him what you want. We trust you. We believe your word. You're a healer. Heal cancer, Lord. Heal heart trouble, Lord. Heal back conditions, Lord. Glorify your name. Heal the kidney trouble. By the power of Jesus, the anointing shall destroy the yoke. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Glory, 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 glory. Well, he is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus yes, on is. the main line. Tell him what you want. Tell him. He is on the main line. Tell, Tell him, him what, what you want. Glory, glory, His line glory. is never busy. Tell him what you want. Oh, hallelujah. Tell him, busy. Tell him what you want. Hallelujah. Don't lose faith. Amen. Don't quit. Just hold on to what you know is right. Call him up. Tell him what you want. (laughs) Glorify the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory, 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 glory. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you are. Ah, Call him name. up. Holy Call Ghost. him up and tell him what Thank you are. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him Thank what you, you want. Jesus. He's on the Oh, hallelujah. Jesus Mighty on God. The man, I Mighty tell him God. what you want. Oh, what a God is he. Tell him what you want. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Ah, thanks be well, to God. Well, call him up. Call him up. Glory. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Hallelujah. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. He is on the main line now. Glory to God. He is on the main line. Tell him what you want. He is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on the main the line. Tell him what you thanks want. The God for his healing power. Glory, 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 Yes, Lord. Mighty God. Mighty God. By your divine power, the healing virtue. Well, he is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. He is on the main line. 